Financial statement analysis research is generally concerned with two key features, improving fundamental analysis and identifying market inefficiencies with respect to financial statement information. Improving fundamental analysis is important in order to improve forecasts of profitability and more accurate estimates of firm value. The identification of market inefficiencies is generally within the realm of security equity analysts and quantitative funds that use certain firm or stock characteristics to select hedge portfolios in an attempt to beat the market. Overall, this is a stream of research in which relatively few academics have been involved in. The upshot from this, however, is that it is an area with vast opportunities for future research. To illustrate the nature of mean reversion, Nissim and Penman sort firms into deciles based on return on equity and track its behavior in each decile over the next five years. It is an empirical regularity that the means of each decile tend towards a mean value, with the extreme values at a faster rate than the non-extreme deciles. The economic rationale for why mean reversion and profitability exists comes from two main sources, both of which are related to understanding how profitability is calculated, where ROE is defined as net income scaled by average total equity. First, forces of competition will drive down high earnings. Applying basic economics, where firms are able to generate marginal revenues in excess of marginal costs, this will encourage new entrants, assuming low barriers of entry, until the point where marginal revenues equal marginal costs. This does not imply that new entrants will enter a market until net income equals zero. On the other hand, low earnings are not sustainable, as continued losses will erode a firm's capital. On the denominator, profitability will decrease, holding all else constant, with prior year's profits being reinvested into the firm, increasing a firm's equity. Again, mean reversion and profitability does not imply firms' earnings will be decreasing, but could signify that a firm's earnings are increasing, but at a slower rate than the growth in equity or assets. An important approach within the forecasting literature is to consider how disaggregation of earnings is able to improve our ability to forecast future profitability. Approaches to this have included disaggregating the income statement into different line items, the split of profitability into return on net operating assets, net borrowing costs and leverage, the components of DuPont analysis, the disaggregation of profitability into components related to market-wide information, industry-specific sources, and firm idiosyncratic information, and firm life cycle effects. The second main role of financial statement analysis research is to identify market inefficiencies with respect to the use of financial statement information. After identifying the optimal use of financial statement information, one can then examine whether the market efficiently uses this information. A traditional approach in papers examining market inefficiencies will generally take the form of first documenting differential persistence in the components of earnings, then assess whether market participants appear to differentially price these components or fixate on total earnings. And then in the case of where the market does not appear to correctly price these components, whether an out of sample trading strategy will be able to earn excess returns. Sloan 1996 is probably the most well known study on financial analysis and market efficiency. He disaggregates return on assets into accruals and operating cash flows, hypothesizing that accruals are less less persistent than cash flows because of the subjective nature of accruals. Consistent with this prediction, he finds that accrued earnings are significantly less persistent than operating cash flows. From my review of the literature, there is a lack of FSA research conducted within the Chinese setting. 
This is despite there being many institutional differences between the US, where the vast majority of FSA research has been conducted, and China. The limited ability to engage in short selling, for example, will limit the ability to execute hedge portfolio trading strategies as required to take advantage of identified market inefficiencies. The involvement of the Chinese government influencing the large proportion of mom and pop investors will also potentially impact on the efficiency of the market and potentially influence the degree to which fundamental information is impounded into price. More importantly, from a fundamental analysis perspective, however, is the listing rule on the Shenzhen and Shanghai stock exchanges that will expel companies that post three years of consecutive losses. Such a listing rule will potentially impact on the degree of persistence and mean reversion and profitability and their components. It not only accelerates the reversion, but also smooth the profits as managers might be reluctant to report large profits. The threat of delisting after reporting a string of consecutive losses may also impact on the threshold with which the exercise of the liquidation option will be invoked, thus impacting on the valuation of firms. Consistent with the approach in Nissim and Penman, I sought the sample of firms by year into deciles based on total return on equity, and then separately on the DuPont components and graph the median value of each decile over the following five years. The patterns documented are remarkably similar to those of Nissim and Penman, except with the exception that the rate of reversion in the lowest deciles of ROE, ROA, and profit margin appear to be sharper in the Chinese setting, quite possibly due to the heightened threats of delisting due to streams of reported losses. Mean reversion appears to be a robust finding in the profitability ratios, but asset turnover and leverage are much more persistent across all deciles. The Chinese setting provides many opportunities for research and financial statement analysis. It is an empirical question whether factors such as delisting requirements for firms with repeated losses impacts on the way in which future earnings are persistent and hence the ability to forecast future earnings. Similarly, the role of state-owned enterprises in China and the extent to which government ownership influences business practices may also differentially affect the way in which financial statement analysis is able to be used in forecasting. Over the past few decades, the Chinese economy has been rapidly expanding with GDP growth above 5% in all but three years since 1980, including 2020, in which most of the world's economies were crippled by COVID-19 restrictions. Applying the disaggregation technique from Jackson, Plumley and Roundtree would be useful to examine how much of a firm's earnings grew due to firm-specific strategies as opposed to a generally growing economy, and what this means for forecasting future profitability. From the descriptive statistics, however, it would appear that the mean reversion in the components of a DuPont analysis do not provide sufficient motivation to simply replicate prior research in a different environment. Rather, it is the unique features of the Chinese business environment that needs to provide the motivation. Likewise, the role of the stock market in Chinese investing portfolios may influence the role that financial statement analysis plays in the price formation process. Given that mom and pop investors are generally assumed to be naive, there's potentially greater opportunities to utilize the components of financial statements to engage in profitable trading strategies. However, the characterization of participants in the Chinese market as gambling may limit the efficiency of such trades if prices are not formed based on fundamental information, but instead by the role of investor sentiment. 
Further, the limit on short selling will fundamentally alter the way in which trading strategies need to be designed as hedge portfolios which involve shorting particular stocks are not implementable.